Good morning, friends. It is Link, the Gulf Coast Gardener, coming to you almost live from Jamaica Beach, Texas, on the west end of sunny Galveston Islands. Today is Saturday, June the 17th, and the garden is doing really well this year. So let's go take a look. Now, one of my favorite things about the garden this year is this volunteer patch of zinnias. I had a compost pile here last year, and these guys just popped up, so I've started weeding them and watering them and mulching them in, and I love having these flowers growing in the yard. It's so much fun. Now, I've upgraded my compost game big time. You may have seen the video. This is a three, uh, a three bin, a compost bin made out of pallets that I picked up for free at the hardware store. Highly recommend it. If you have a garden, you really do need a compost pile. Just putting it in piles is the best way. And I just love this compost pile, it's wonderful. Now, let's get back to the garden. Now, you probably know that I'm a huge fan of Birdie's raised beds. These are manufactured in Australia and they are sold by Epic Gardening. So epicgardening.com, these beds are phenomenal. I am a half mile from the beach and these things have not rusted at all in going on my third year, fourth year. I'm not even sure how long ago I got these. They look great, they're wonderful raised beds. They're not very expensive and they're easy to put together. Now they come in all shapes and sizes and colors. I love the round ones. I love this, this off-white color, uh, but you, they have all, all different kinds to choose from. So check it out, Birdie's Raised Beds from Epic Gardening. Now let's see what's going on in these guys. Now this is a dwarf tomato. I'm growing three varieties of dwarf tomatoes, which is basically a, a kind of a cross between a determinate and an indeterminate. So in theory, it makes flowers all season, but it doesn't get too big. And so far that's been my experience. Now this is a succession of a rosella purple and check out these plants. I just love them. They're, they're like a little tomato tree. They're the prettiest, healthiest plants. Um, they don't have any built in disease resistance because it's because it's technically an heirloom you can save the seeds but i really haven't had issues with disease on these guys um i fought the wind a little bit and figuring out how to prop them up was a bit of a challenge but honestly you just need a single cage or a big stake and one tomato per birdie's raised bed is perfect as you can see now i've got some sweet alyssum growing around it um, sweet alyssum is excellent companion plant for tomatoes because it attracts a certain kind of wasp i forget what it is but that wasp uh, feeds on the worms that will typically get on your tomato plants. So this is the first round of Rosella Purple. And I've got a little bit of a problem here. You probably figured it out already in that I put two plants in here and I should have only put one. It's just not enough room in here. I'm not getting the airflow that I need, uh, but the tomatoes have been fantastic. The flavor is phenomenal. Uh, so I'll definitely can grow these every year. Now, I've got a big one down there. I've got more tomatoes here. There's one hanging right there. There's a there's another one there. And it's still covered in flowers. So if I just keep this guy watered in, I should have tomatoes for the next couple of months maybe. And that's the idea, right? Let's keep this thing going as long as possible. But next year, I'm only planting one dwarf tomato per birdie's raised round bed. Now, these next two bins, these next two beds, both have a daddle hot pepper. This is a succession planting. I've got five plants per per her raised bed and let's just skip on down to the next one because this is my first planting and as you can see it is loaded with peppers do you see all those peppers in there they are just everywhere now daddle is a hot pepper it is a hot orange pepper that has an amazing flavor and let's go check out what these guys look like they are so pretty i really am enjoying growing these peppers now i've got a local a local restaurant here in jamaica beach it's called the galvestonite bistro and he's been buying these peppers and also my cherry tomatoes he makes an incredible dish with cherry tomatoes that he stuffs with goat cheese and basil and drizzles with balsamic vinaigrette it will knock your socks off so he may have some of those available um during the year if, if he's getting tomatoes from me and he's also going to make an incredible hot sauce from these daddle peppers. I can't wait to try it now. This is a Galahad determinate tomato. It's my favorite tomato to grow. If I only grew one tomato, it might be this one because it is so prolific. Check out these tomatoes. This plant is just covered with tomatoes. There's 20 or 30 on here now. I've already picked five or 10 off, off my two plants and it just keeps spitting out tomatoes. Notice it really doesn't have any disease issues, which is your biggest challenge here at the beach. I mean, it's a little eaten up. This, this, these leaves are chewed up a little bit, but you know what, there's no blight down here. Now I do trim away the dead leaves when I need to. Um, and I didn't do a very good job caging this. As you can see, this big, this big arm flopped out of there before I could get it inside the cage. So I need to be a little more diligent with my cages. I need actually bigger cages. Uh, and I have a, have a plan for next year, but who cares? Look at this, tomato central. Galahad determinate tomato, 
Really nice disease resistance. The flavor is like an heirloom. It is fantastic. I'll, I'll throw a picture up here. Check it out. It is beautiful. It's meaty. It's juicy. It doesn't have a ton of that slimy, seedy stuff in it. It is the best tomato I've ever grown. Absolutely. Love it. Galahad. You can get the plants from me in the spring. You can also buy seed and start them yourself. They're available widely at a bunch of different seed suppliers. Uh, apologies for the wind. It just kicked up. This is lime basil. I got the seed from my neighbor, and look how pretty this is. Now, it's kind of blown over from a windstorm we had last week, but it's flowering, and the pollinators love herb flowers. So I'm just going to leave this as is until I need the space um, and just let the bees keep working it. The, the basil gets a little bitter once it goes to seed, so um, I've got other basil plants, but it's just wonderful. And lime basil, it smells like, well, lime and basil, as you can imagine. It's, it's amazing. So grow some lime basil. Down at the end here, this is a bit of a flower patch. These are Victoria Blue Salvia. If you watch my videos, you know it, it might be my favorite perennial, and you can see why, because it just flowers constantly. The butterflies, the pollinators love it. Um, it comes back from a freeze. This froze to the ground over Christmas, and within a couple of weeks, it was getting ready to flower again. It's it's amazing plant. So Victoria Blue Salvia. Salvias come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are like four or five inches tall, six inches tall. Some, like this Victoria Blue, get huge, and I love these plants. Check it out over there. I've got some, this is one of the things I didn't start from seed. This is tropical milkweed. I, I didn't, I haven't had any luck keeping the native milkweed alive, so I do like to support the monarchs. I'll cut it back in the fall. Per the instructions on tropical milkweed, uh, more Victoria Blue Salvia, more tropical milkweed. I just, that worked out really well, didn't it? I, I didn't think how this was going to all be the similar height with different color flowers. Sometimes you just get lucky. You plant stuff and it works out. Now, over here, jalapeno peppers. They look terrible because I dug them up and moved them, which was a bad idea, and they're not very happy with me. This one was still flowering though, so I might get some jalapenos off here. Actually, there's some little peppers on there. So that one plant will provide some peppers for me. Now these are grow bags. It's the first time I've tried growing plants in grow bags. These are five gallon bags. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge. These are daddle peppers. They're the same, I, I planted these the same time I did the ones in those large, in the round raised beds. You can see these are a third of the size, but you know what, they're covered in peppers. So that's the whole point, right? And these, and everything started um, ripening sooner. So I got my first hot peppers, sorry for the blurriness, out of the grow bag. And so I got, started getting peppers out of these grow bags and then I'm getting them out of the garden now. So it's, it's been kind of an interesting exper experiment. Um, now, if you're gonna put things in grow bags, they shouldn't be in your raised beds because the whole idea is you're expanding your space. But I just had them up here to water um, and I'll move them out of the garden later this afternoon. So um, these are, the other favorite tomato. This is called Estorina. This is a yellow cherry tomato and the flavor is just sublime. Now, the plants get massive. I've got to figure out a better way to maintain these large indeterminate plants. I'm going to build some cages that I got the design from Joe Gardner. Basically, he builds these giant tomato cages out of cattle panels and they're big and they handle your giant tomatoes and you really can't even knock those things over. So check out Joe Gardner um, tomato cage. Google that and you'll find a great, a great, um, design recipe for tomato cages. Anyway, Estorina cherry tomato. It's absolutely wonderful. They're yellow cherry tomatoes. They have a fantastic flavor. They're sweet. They're a little bit tart. I like to pick them before they're fully ripe because they're really crunchy and tart, but they're still sweet. They're just, they're just amazing tomato. Now, this is a bit of a big patch of thyme. Getting a little burned up from the heat we've had lately, uh, but I like to have a big patch of thyme always in the garden. Over here, there's the coffee station where I like to have my morning coffee in the morning and contemplate life. And I, and I planted some more jalapeno peppers. Um, I did five of them down here and those two um, are pretty much DED. Uh, these other three, they're looking pretty good though. Um, they're hanging in there. They're starting to flower and put on some green growth. So I'll get some jalapenos out of these guys. Now, a couple of more tomatoes to discuss. Do you recognize these guys? If these look suspiciously like the other tomato, that's because it's the same variety. These are also Galahad tomatoes. Check these guys out, holy cow. There are four giant tomatoes off that one stalk. So there's a bunch in here, there's a bunch in here. There's big ripe ones on the inside that you can't see because it's hidden by the foliage. And then I've also got another dwarf tomato over here. These are, this is called Dwarf Eagle Smiley. I had to grow it just for the name. It's a yellow cherry called Dwarf Eagle Smiley. What a great name. Uh, the flavor is really good as well. I really like the Dwarf Eagle Smiley. Um, Jury's out on whether I would grow it again when I have access to other varieties, but um, I'm learning which dwarf tomatoes I like the best, and I may or may not grow those next year, but they're very tasty. Check out this Galahad. Holy cow. 
There's like tomatoes everywhere. Dang, look inside there. I just noticed. Big ripe one inside, another one ripening. I need to pick that today before the birds get to it. A side note, um, I'm growing a ton of cherry tomatoes. Let me walk quickly over here. Down at the end here, you see all these cherry tomatoes? Let me zoom in a little bit. I've got six or seven or eight cherry tomato plants that are loaded with cherry tomatoes. And I think what happened this year with the birds is that they started eating the cherry tomatoes. They developed a taste for it. The color caught their eye and they've been leaving my big cherry tomatoes alone. Now, I hope I'm not jinxing anything. I really don't believe in that. But anyway, they have not been pecking on my big tomatoes, which was my biggest challenge last year. So maybe get you a bunch of cherry tomatoes, share them with the birds because you have so many, and then hopefully you'll get lucky and the birds won't mess with your big ones. Now over here, I've got four more of those daddle peppers, so I'll have plenty uh, to eat and to share with neighbors and to, and to get up to the Galvis tonight. Now my final little patch in the garden, these are lime zinnias and they are so pretty. I just love how green and beautiful these, these flowers are. I love growing flowers. I love growing the mixed colors, the zinnias, the Benares giant, but these lime zinnias are also just sublime now. I've got some other plants in here. If you saw one of the previous gardening videos, you may remember I had a giant patch of borage. Well, those things self seed readily. Check it out, I got a bunch of borage plants in here. I need to dig these up and pot them up and move them because they will just overwhelm the zinnias. But look, they popped up everywhere. I've got borage volunteers in here. So if you do grow borage in your garden or in your yard, keep in mind, it's gonna keep coming back most likely. Now, I don't mind, I love volunteer plants. I just dig them up and move them or give them away or sell them. So, um, but it, it self seeds readily and it has, it'll have a second generation of plants the first year. So anyway, that's a quick update from the garden. If you can call 12 minutes quick, I do appreciate the fact that you guys watch these videos. Give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so. Um, don't forget to subscribe. I'm getting close to 300 subscribers on my road to 1000. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day.